Blessed is our God at all times, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are you, O Christ our God, who have filled the fishermen with wisdom by sending down the Holy Spirit upon them. Tonight we're going to change our view to the second half of the, the book. Probably the part more of us are more familiar with, and that of course is the New Testament. The New Testament. There are, as I think I mentioned the very first week, a total of 27 books in the New Testament. Tonight we're going to look at the first five, the four Gospels and the book of Acts. Now, last week as we made our rather rapid forced march through 2,000 years of salvation history, tonight we're really going to, to look at a span of maybe 30 years. So we, 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 we not only move to a lot fewer, fewer books, but we, we move to a much more compressed time span, time span, and four of these books all deal with the same time, time, time span. And once again, if I can get technology on my side, here we go. What does gospel mean? It's one of those good words news. that we use, and you know, what does it mean? Good news. Good news. Good guess. Uh, it comes from an old Eng English word, Godspell. If you were around in the 1970s or are a fan of musical theater, you should have heard that word many times. Godspell. Good news. It's a literal trans, translation of the Greek evangelion. And so this was the kind of thing when a messenger would come into a king's court and he would yell out, I have evangelion. I have good news. And no matter how long the story took, you, you knew it was going to end well because you'd been told beforehand this is good news. And so we have that hint starting out here as well. Whatever twists and turns this story may take, it's going to end well. Because we've told you in advance, this is good news. The word itself is first used by St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. So the word itself is used for the very first time in Scripture. As I said, it's probably the part of the Bible we are all most familiar with. How many gospels are there? Four. 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 Much easier than if I asked you how many Old Testament prophets are of there, right? <laughs> there are four. Can we name them all? Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke John. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Very good. Do we know why they're in that order? Every Bible everywhere in the world has them in, in that order. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The earliest? No. Earliest to it's latest. What the early church fathers believed was the chronological or, order in which they were written. Mm -hmm. They believed Matthew was first, Mark was second, Luke was third, and John was fourth. With the biblical scholarship we have had in the last hundred years or so, we now believe actually Mark 
was written first. Notice that we didn't decide to change the order of, of the, 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 uh, the uh, books. Uh, we've left them how they are. All four of these are, we believe, are written either by the very disciple named or by a follower of theirs. Someone who heard Matthew preach wrote down what he said. Or Matthew wrote it down himself. We, that's that's our, our best knowledge now. But there's a little bit more going on here because uh, if you remember from Sesame, Sesame uh, Street, the old song, one of these things is not like the other, one of these things just doesn't belong. Well, one of these Gospels is different than the other three. And we're going to deal with those three first. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are collectively known as the synoptics, or the syn 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 synoptic gos gos gospels. They are essentially telling exactly the same story. They have this uh, sin. If you think of the word syn synonym, well, synoptic. They have the same vision. They have the, the same vision. They share similar out, outlines. They relate many of the same stories and 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 parables. Within these three, Luke does stick out just a little bit. Uh, he tends to include a little more detail than Matthew and Mark do. And as I said, we now believe that Mark was written first, and then Matthew and Luke used his gospel as well as other sources in writing theirs. So let's look at each one. Mark, which we believe was is the first of the gospels written first, is the gospel we believe was written first, is written sometime around 70 AD. So this is roughly 40 years af 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 after the crucifixion, 40 years after Christ has left the scene. And we believe Mark is the John Mark mentioned in Acts 12.12. 12. And what he's probably writing down is the pre-preaching pre of St. Peter. He's probably, he's, he's a follower of Peter, and he's writing down what Peter says. Interesting, then, that it's not known as the Gospel of St. Peter, but it's known as the Gospel of, of St. Mark. It's possibly written in Rome, and a couple of things that we can tell from reading this, his his. His audience is a community that knows the risks of persecution. And one of the features of Mark is something that scholars like to call the messianic secret, uh, which is very often after Christ performs a miracle, or he will ask someone, who do you think that I am? And they will come up with the right answer. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. And then he says something like, don't tell anyone else. The point for St. Mark is that each of us has to come to know Christ as Messiah personally. We know Christ as Messiah through a personal relationship, not because someone else says so. We get to know Christ dire, die, directly. Matthew, written sometime around 85, 
we believe he's rioting for 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 Jewish Chris Christians in Palestine. You know, many folks will say, well, why don't the Gospels absolutely agree? Think about this. In the days when we used to write letters, if you were writing to your college roommate, your mother, or your son, and telling them about the same e events, you wouldn't tell the story exactly the same way to each of them. You might emphasize different things. You might use different vogue, vocabulary. And so it's often through the use of that vocabulary we can say, aha, uh -huh, Matthew's wording this a little bit differently. He's using phrases and words and ideas that Jewish Christians would know, but Gentiles wouldn't. And among the reasons we think this, and I'll go through a, a, a few of them here, are we believe there was an original version of Matthew written in Aramaic before the the uh, the uh, Greek, because if you if you look at the Greek for the, for the scholars who can read the Greek and know Aramaic as well, there are idioms in the Greek that that aren't really Greek. There are word orders and things that are really more as though he's directly trans, trans, translating from Aramaic. So it's not the way, if you were writing to someone who really knew Greek, it's not the way you would, not the way you would uh, write. If there was indeed an original version in Aramaic, it has been lost. The, on, the only version we have is the Greek. Matthew makes 130 references to the Old Testament. He's speaking to an audience that would know the scripture very well. Gentile non-Jews wouldn't know this stuff. Jews would. It's considered to be the most Jewish of the Gospels of the Gospels, and it's the only Gospel that uses the word church. Chapter 16, verse 18, and chapter 18, verse 17. It's the only one of the four Gospels that uses both the word church. Luke, also written about 85, we believe this is written for a Gentile Christian audience in Antioch. In, in other words, us. You know, we are part, as Melkites, we are part of the church of, An, of Antioch. This was written, we believe, for the church of Antioch. Luke puts a great emphasis on the poor and on women, 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 much more than the other three evangelists do. And so for that, he is often called the evangelist of God's tenderness. And even if Luke is writing of a similar event that Matthew and Mark also write, Luke tends to include more details. And it's interesting sometimes to read what those details are. It's this gospel opens and closes in the, in, in the Jewish temple. And among the reasons I decided to include Acts in the talk tonight, Acts is actually the second half of the Gospel of Luke. It's one book that's been divided into two. If you read the first verses of, of Acts, it says, As I mentioned in the first part, O Theophilus, 
He's referring to Luke. And when he talks to this person named Theophilus, the Theophilus may have been the actual person's name, or it may not have, because it simply means lover of God. So he could be speaking to a generalized audience and just using that name for anyone who may happen to be reading this. And finally, Luke has some of the absolute best Greek in the New Testament. It's very well written. It's L, it's L, 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 elegant. Unlike what we'll see in St. Paul, uh, who uses very common Greek. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's even called koin, a koin, a, a Greek, which is just another word for common Greek. Luke was obviously a, a very educated man, and of course we have the tradition that he is a physician. And so, moving from Luke, into Acts, as I said, it's the continuation of Luke. It picks up right after the resurrection and tells us about the early life of the church, how the church spreads. It's in Acts that we learn all about the ascension and about Pentecost. It's in Acts that we learn about the, the first church council, and then a great part of Acts, probably half of the book of, of, of Acts, is all about St. Paul. If you want to know about St. Paul's life and activity, you don't read the epistles of St. Paul, you read Acts. And then John. This is the one that stands out. This is not one of the of the synoptic gospels. John is very much doing his own thing. John is almost not a gospel, but almost a theological reflection on the gospel. It's almost kind of a second generation experience. And among the reasons for that is the Gospel of John is not written until about 100 AD. If you remember from the Gospel accounts, John is the youngest of the 12. And so when Christ dies, he may have been a teen and not much more. So he lives to a ripe old, he lives to a ripe old, old, old age, and near the end of that time writes the gospel. The gospel. Most likely, it's written in in Asia Minor, which is the fancy word for modern day Tur 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 Turkey. We know that John spent the last years of his life in exile on the island of Patmos. Other than that, he had lived for many years in the city of Ephesus. John uses very simple words, but they're words that have great depth. Think about the very first lines of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There's 17 words there. Except for one of them, they are all one-syllable words. But think about what those words mean. They are very short, very simple words, but the meaning is profound. There's great depth. Some of the ways you can identify quotes from Saint from, from the Gospel of John, 
you'll often hear gospel quotes that start off either amen I say to you or truly I say to you. If it's from the Gospel of John, he's going to say, Amen, Amen, I say to you. So he's the only one that uses this double Amen. We don't know why, he just does. So if you see a quote that starts off, Amen, Amen, you can immediately say, John, John. He's John's is the only gospel in which we find explicitly a three-year public ministry of Christ. In the other three gospels, and none of them say Christ ministered for three years. No one actually uses that as an exact quote. What we have, though, in John is three different visits to the, to the city of Jerusalem for su successive pass Passover, Passovers. And it's on the third one then that, that he is arrested and crucified. Matthew, Mark, and Luke only mention going to, Jer to Jerusalem once. So it's not that they say Christ didn't preach for three years, is that they only mention one visit to Jer Jerusalem. Personally, it's I, I, I as a com, as a half educated opinion, I would think the ministry was actually only one year because. Christ is ruffling enough feathers that they're not going to let him go twice before they finally get it. And, and there's not enough going on to fill a three-year cycle. If, if you read the Gospel accounts, everything that's in there could fit into one year. It could. On the other hand, I could be wrong and John could could be a right. Another feed, feed, feed feature of John, oh, John has no parables. None. If you're reading a parable, it's from one of the three synoptics, Matthew, Mark, or Luke. And one of the other feed Feet, 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 feet features of John are long dis long discourses by Christ. About half the the gospel is from the Last Supper on, and it's these long texts of Jesus talk talking. If you think about our twelve gospel sermons during Holy Week. And think about how long that goes on. It's because a lot of that comes from John. So John, so John focuses in on the events of the crucifixion very, very much. And if we take time at the end for an extra class to talk about the events of Holy Week, John has some interesting alternatives to Holy Week rather than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's interesting how we have chosen what we, how we, we, <coughs> we follow things. We traditionally accept a three-year ministry which comes <coughs> from John, but then for the events of Holy Week we kind of ignore John and accept the, the timing in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, because in, in John, the Last Supper is not a Passover meal. The Passover doesn't even happen until Christ is dying on the cross. Now, John may be doing that for theological reasons. We can go into that when, if and when, we get to talk about all of the Four evangelists, 
John is the only one to author something else. He is also the author of three epistles and the book of Revelation, which, inshallah, we're going to look at in two weeks. Anything of the four evangelists strike anyone as odd? Anyone? Anyone? You will. Okay. How about, why are they all written so late? The Gospel of John isn't written until for 70 years after Christ dies. 70 years. Who's meditating? <laughs> well, there are reasons for uh, this. Why so late? The Gospels are only written down around the time that the Apostles start dying off. There's your first clue. Well, first off, we can hear these stories firsthand. We don't need to have them written down. The second reason is the church expects the second coming is going to ha happen any day now. So again, we don't have to write this down because Christ is coming back soon, real soon. And it's only now as the apostles start dying off and he hasn't come, come back yet that they say, okay, maybe we need to preserve this because maybe he's going to take a little longer than we thought. <laughs> And so, with the apostles dying off, the church wants to preserve the testimony of the eyewitnesses. Now, again, there are other things out there that call themselves Gospels. And every now and then you'll find something on the aforementioned History ch ch Channel, or the Learning Channel, or something else, and they will present these with great fanfare and tell you that you know these were lost and nobody knows what they said. But in the next hour, we will re we will re reveal what they say. Well, not quite true. They were never lost. We've had them all this time. The church has known about them and rejected them. You can go into any bookstore and, and buy cop copies. They are, some of them are very odd. Um, some of them are not odd, but for whatever reason, the, the church chose to accept only these four. Georgia. When you refer to the word church, you mean an organized group of people that are... As opposed to? Just the ordinary citizen? Well, believe want. yes, when I talk about church here saying the, the church, well, yes and no. Because part of what goes on, part of the reason certain books get a, got accepted into scripture and certain ones didn't, was to some extent an, an, an organic process. Remember, you don't have parishes like we have them now. You, and Christianity starts out as an urban ph phenomenon. It's in cities. So you would have a group of Christians in Corinth, a group of Christians in Antioch, a group of Christians in Athens. And it's these local communities, it's these local church or churches who over time, well, these are the books we, act, we in our community accept. And then finally, over two or three hundred years, and it, the, the process isn't really complete until after the Council of Nicaea, do we get one universally accepted can, 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 canon of scripture. So, you know, this church has two letters by St. Paul. This church has those two plus three more. This 
once everything is, is able to be shared, because also, by the time John writes, by the time Matthew and Luke write, the church has, has already had to go underground. It's, it's not even up above ground anymore. It can't be publicly known because after about 70 AD is a turning point both for the Jewish faith and the Christian faith. Uh, and it's around 70 or so where there is finally this explicit split because before 70 AD Chris, Christianity is essentially just another Jewish sect. They're Jews who believe that the Messiah has come. And other Jews are saying, no, he didn't. And it's right around 70 AD where there is a firm and fast division here and Jews who believe that the Messiah has come and that that Messiah was Jesus, the son of Mary, are kicked out. And as soon as they're not considered Jews anymore, the Romans, the Romans have one exception to their re religious laws, because to be a good member of the Roman Empire, you have to worship the Roman gods. They have given one, accepts, one exception for Jews because it will so deeply offend the uh, Jews who believe in only one God that the Romans are willing to, okay, we'll exempt you. But as soon as there's this split and Christians are no longer considered Jews, now the Roman Empire comes out you're not Jews. You don't have this religious exemption. You have to also worship the Roman gods. And it's when they say, no, we can't, that the persecutions start and go on for effectively the next 250 years. Did the Romans give the exception for the Jews in the front of the get-go? Uh, what do you mean by get-go? Well, when they... When they come into the mid Middle East? Yes. And when the Romans became the power? Yes. Billy. Um, how much of this, when it says the, um, the apostles wanted to, to preserve the testimony of the eyewitnesses, um, the, was this what they were, an oral? There, this, this is a society yes. where there's a lot of. Yes, writing. that's why the Gospels start being written. Was there written any, down. Would there have been anything written by the eyewitnesses previously that, that we'll talk about that next week right. because actually I'll give you a, a little preview. The first Christian documents written down are not the, the gospels, they're the epistles of Saint Paul. So yes, Paul's epistles predate the gospels by about twenty years. But we'll see more of more of that next week. And they're written down specifically because they they are letters. You know, dear Bob. What else? Why did they split the gospel? The um, Luke's right. That I I'm, I I suspect I I don't have an authoritative answer for that off the top top of my my head. My suspicion would be. They wanted the four Gospels to end at approximately the, the, the same point with the crucifixion slash resurrection. Because again, as Evangelion, as good news, the good news is Christ died and rose. This is the very first thing that the apostles preach, Christ died and rose. If you look at the Gospel of, of Mark, there is no narrative of the infancy. We don't find out about Christ's birth in Mark because the fact that Christ is born doesn't, is not the important thing. The important thing is that, that Christ died and rose. It's with the later accounts that now we start getting things written down about his, his birth. It's also why none of the Gospels have anything about these so-called lost years. Um, we have 
in the, the Gospels, if you look at all four of them, we have some account of Christ's birth. We know about the flight into Egypt to avoid Herod. We know that they came back. We know that when Jesus is maybe seven or eight years old, the family goes to Jerusalem and they lose him for three or four days. And after that, there's silence until traditionally we hold Christ began his public ministry at 30 years of age. So there's a silence of 22 years. So we do know, well, supposedly Christ started his public ministry at 30. I was always told that it's Traditionally, yes. I was also always told that his crucifix, the crucifixion was only 33. Well, again, that would follow the Gospel of John with a three-year public ministry. Are you ever, either of these numbers spelled out in literally, or is no. it more, de it's more deferred? Figure? It's tradition. Okay. Um, um, what was I saying just be, be, before that, though? The because I wanted to, to say something. Oh, the lost yes. years. Um, and so also, very often on the History chan ch Channel, or things of that ilk, you will find, and now, the last the lost years of Jesus Christ. And they'll come up with something, and you know, Jesus went to India, Jesus sailed with the Vikings to the New World, Jesus was the first astronaut on the moon. Uh, you know, they come up with all sorts of silly things. The, the answer is we don't know. I would suspect, as a young man, Jesus would have spent a lot, a lot of time working with Joseph, learning that trade, and really just kind of being an ordinary young man. We know at some point, again, some point between that age of eight when he gets lost, and the beginning of the public ministry, again, traditionally at 30 years of age, somewhere in there, Joseph leaves the scene. At the very least, Scripture never mentions him during the public ministry of Christ. They, they will mention Mary, but Joseph's gone. Tradition holds Joseph died. died. Mm -hmm. But again, we have no scriptural account of that. We don't know if Joseph died when, jo when Jesus was 10, 25, or if Joseph's death was the, was the real catalyst for the beginning of the public ministry. We, we don't know. There is no evidence at all. Scripture is silent. Is silent. Is silent. Is silent. Um, yes. Sis. Was Paul, Paul was not an eyewitness. Uh, no. Uh, Paul is not an eyewitness to, well, let me put a caveat there. As far as we know, mm -hmm. Paul would be a few years young, 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 younger than Christ. He, he never says mm -hmm. that he was a witness to any of the public ministry of Christ. And I think everyone would expect that if he had been, he would say so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say he, he is not a public witness to any of that. He does hold that he has seen Christ in his conversion experience on the road to Damascus. And the, only other, the other one is that he, uh, the cloak, uh, when St. Stephen was was martyred, that yes. the cloaks were dropped at his feet. Yes. He was there because he was persecuting the Christians. He was, he, he was, Paul was the active in the post-resurrection period, in the post-ascension period, as the church is beginning, be, be, beginning to be persecuted, persecuted, Paul is there, and Paul is actually take, take, taking part. And what takes Paul from Jerusalem to Antioch, uh, excuse me, to, uh, Damascus. to Damascus, is he's gotten permission from the officials. He has kind of a pub, public license to go out and kill follow followers mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. Ed. Um, the Church of Antioch. Yes. Is, uh, I think one of the Gospels was written 
Yes, I, I did mention that. At the church in India? Mm -hmm. you did? Yes, I did. Okay. I made quite a point which, which of point? that. Uh, what did I say? Matthew? Luke, 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 Luke. 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 Okay. Yep. Luke. Sorry. Luke. What else? Anything? Billy. I got a silly thing. Go ahead. I'm just looking at the dates. It was, yes. It's like if if if, if uh, well, say John is writing in 100 A.D. Yep. And if they're preserving testimony of eyewitnesses, and if you were 20 years old. When Christ was crucified, or a, a little less, but well, well, yes, mean, he, he is a very been, old man. A hundred and twenty-year-old person testifying. No, no, no. He's not that. No, he's, he's not that. 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 He'd be about ninety and five. Yeah. Yeah. But if you no, no. But I'm saying if, if, to preserve a testimony, from yeah. an eyewitness. Was it from the eyewitnesses or like the children of eyewitnesses? No, no, no. It's the witnesses themselves. John, this is John. This is John writing down what he saw. What he saw. Yes. And Luke writing, writing down page? what he saw. Uh -huh. Matthew writing down what he saw. Okay. Mark okay. probably okay. writing yeah, down what Saint the, Peter okay. saw. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. What else? Yeah. Because again, if John is maybe fifteen or so at that yeah. time of the cruise, zero AD, this is 70 years yeah. on. He's only yeah. 85. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. Now let me he let me give you a little caveat true. on dates. Um, in the ancient world, they would not have used the calendar system we have now. You know, dates and years were usually either from the ascension of a king, or from, or in this case, from the ascension of as well. In the Roman Empire. Years were dated from the founding of the city. And so we're, at, in this period, we're in about 400 and something AUC of urbe condita, from the founding of the city. It's St. Jerome who kind of goes back and fixes all of these dates. He wants to fix it from the birth of Christ. Um, and from the best of our recollection, or from, from the best of our calculations now, he's gotten close. He's pro he could be a few years off. So that, would it bother anyone's faith if Christ had been born in 3 or 4 BC, mm -hmm. rather than in the year 1? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it shouldn't. Um, but yeah, he's, he's off by about 3 or 4 years three or four years. He forgot to carry the one. <laughs> so that rather than a public ministry beginning, if we are absolutely right that Jesus started his public ministry when he was 30 years old and it was a three year ministry so that he's crucified at 33, rather than a public ministry from 30 to 33, it might have been from 27 to 30 AD. And again, that doesn't change anything that Christ actually preached or that Christ actually did. It's just that we've gotten the calendar a little off. So that this is not the year two, 2013, it's really 2010. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> John lived the longest because the others yes. were, were martyred. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, John John starts off younger than all of them, and he lives to a ripe old age. The worst uh, punishment he's given, as I mentioned earlier, was, was exile. Mm -hmm. And so he's not allowed to live in Ephesus anymore. He's sent to the Isle of Who exiled him? Patmos. Who oh, exiled Romans? Romans? Chris. Um. Again, Jesus got lost at the age of eight or nine. Yeah, there is that gospel s story of the Holy Family going to Jerusalem, and they're on their way back home with the caravan, 
and it takes three or four days until, you know, Joseph thinks Mary has him, Mary thinks Joseph has him, and they go back, they have to go back, and they find him in the, in the tem temple, pre 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 preaching, and everyone is shocked that this young boy is, is so wise, and they, the, the, his, you know, Joseph and Mary start to scold him, don't you know, you know, we've been worried. And he tells them, there was no reason for you to worry. I'm, I'm doing my father's work. Yes. Yes. And then there's silence. There's and then there's, from the that event, until he starts preaching. there's nothing until he goes to visit John and, and gets baptized. Yeah, and the baptism by John, not this John, obviously, John the yeah, baptizer, yeah. uh, is the is the is is the action that marks the beginning of the public ministry. No mention Joseph. Joseph is never mentioned after that. Tradition is that he has died. Yeah. Uh, the tradition is that Mary is Joseph's second wife. And that Joseph is a widower and of a of a reasonably advanced age, um, so that it's not a shock that he dies okay. somewhere in there. One uh, one curious difference between east and west. Um, east, uh, we have no problem with the phrase brothers of the Lord, actually meaning brothers of the Lord, but only in, in that Joseph had sons from his first marriage, one of them being James, the Apostle James. And so when the Holy Family goes into Egypt, the, the icons normally show Joseph, Mary, Jesus, and James. Western art will only show Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Yes. And this thought just came to me when uh, Elizabeth was pregnant and Zechariah, you know, was mm -hmm. struck dumb. Yes. That his name is going to be John. Yes. And then you have John the Baptist. John the Baptist, and you have the apostle named John. Yes. So. Well, well but we have two apostles names named James. We have two apostles named Jude. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, but the, but the name was specifically specifically given to Zechariah. His name should be, will be John. Yes, but there so is that, no connection at all between oh. John the Baptist and John the Apostle. So I was just wondering, so was John the Apostle born after, had to be born after John? Yes. So maybe he got the jo name from John the Baptist, well, I, no, I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think you Any can draw John? that. Um, John the Baptist would have been born uh, six months before Jesus. Uh, six months before, Jesus. Uh, and then uh, John the Apostle would have been born about 15 years after Christ. Mm -hmm. So John the Baptist is still only a 15-year-old boy when mm -hmm. John the Apostle is born. So no, there's no mm -hmm. con 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 there's no connection between one being named John and the other one being being being, being named. I was in a Bible class I did elsewhere once. I was pointing out at the crucifixion, um, after the crucifixion, as the myrrh bearing women, women come to, to the tomb, it talks about the, the names of the women there. We, because, as I mentioned in the first week, because of the way Greek is written, it's hard for us to tell if there were two or six because there's no punctuation, there's no spaces, it's very hard to tell. But if there are six, like three of them would be named Mary. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I was opining how odd that would have been. And someone in the class said, well, but Mary is a very po popular name. I said, yeah, now. <laughs> Now, not then. It was just a normal name. You know, Mary gets gets big because of the Virgin Mary. 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 Um, anyway, what else about Gospels or 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 Acts? These are good quests. Nothing. Georgia. 
when whoever was that was going to put the Bible together. Yes. Did they include every single word, or did they choose what they wanted to put and omit? And no, when they chose a book, they chose the entire book. Uh, we have some of the earliest scrolls we have go back to about the second century, and they are the complete texts as we have them now. Um, I just had a, an idea in my mind for a long time. Uh, but I want to come back to uh, oh. that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think that a lot of the information presented would have had to come from Mary. But Mary had to be close to some of these. Well, so Mary, was, Mary is going to be with John. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't think it's necessary that a lot of this information has to come from Mary, because again, you've got eyewitnesses to the events themselves. Yeah, but during the public ministry. Okay, okay but Mark has nothing else. And Matthew and Luke oh, okay. use Matthew and Luke use Mark as their 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 source. Um, we can't. There's no. There's no way to prove or disprove that. We we don't know. Um, I wanted to come back while they took the book in its entirety from different scrolls that, that we now have, and probably they would have had too, from Antioch and Rome and Jer Jerusalem, not all the texts, not all of these ancient scrolls are exactly the same. And so if you look in your Bible, sometimes there'll be something, there'll be part of a sentence in brackets and a little footnote there, and the footnote will say some manuscripts have this. Mm -hmm. So some manuscripts have a, a few words here and there that other manuscripts don't. But it's not anything significant. But not all of the ancient manuscripts are exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Some of them have a word or two diff, different here or there. And if you've got a good translation, they will include all of the material and indicate which one is only a, a variant and which one's not. I saw a hand coming up over here. So I'll say, there are eyewitnesses writing the Gospels. Yes. Where did they get the birth from? The birth from? Well, I think that's part of what Ed's bring, 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 bringing up. It could have come from Mary. It could have come from stories told around the campfire, uh, because certainly, even if the ministry is one year long, even if it's only one year long, uh, there's a lot of nights by the campfire where we don't have uh, uh, mention of an anything for it. So stories could have could have been. Oh yeah, I was born in Bethlehem, and then we had to run to Egypt and. So it could have just have just as well have, have come from stories Christ told as Mary. Um, do we have ages of Mary when Christ was born? No. Eight. We know she's a young girl. She's probably 16-ish. And do we have an age when she died or no? Um, I don't remember it offhand, but it's while all of the apostles are still alive. Um, so, um, old age would have been rarer back then, and especially for women, for women, women, for women. Uh, childbirth then was not what childbirth is now. Wasn't there one point they went to hundreds of years of people? Yes, we talked about that last. Well, you didn't watch the video. I didn't. I was thinking I should have before I came. I know. Um, yes, uh, but they were talking about Yes, but that is probably not meant to be taken mm -hmm. literally, but is meant to be a metaphor for the, for the holiness of that per person. And so they were so holy and God loved them so much that they lived 562 years. 
But they didn't know? Uh, probably. Okay. Probably. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sister. When Jesus entrusted uh, Mary to John under yes. the cross, where did they go live after? Did they go to Ephesus together? Yes. And did, but then when were, where was Mary buried? Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Yes. There are at least two tombs of, of there. I've, I've been, been to them both. Hmm. I think one of them makes more sense than the other one does, but that's mm -hmm. a purely pers personal opinion. So the East believes that when Mary died, the apostles, wherever they were, they were transported? They were all there except Tom. Thomas. Thomas, and it's we we learn about the Dora mission because when Thomas finally gets there, he wants to go and and, and say some 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 prayers at her tomb. They roll the stone back. They go inside, and the tomb's empty. So that's where we find out about about the Dora mission. What? Else? Chris? She followed Christ, so she resurrected three days later. <laughs> no? no. No. Okay. Next week is going to be epistles. So, mm -hmm. thank you very much.